We are in the middle of a technological renaissance. The spread of information and improvement in technology is exponentially increasing in speed. Faster, better, smaller, smarter, further. Currently, our scientists are developing artificial intelligence, medical breakthroughs, biotech and nanotech, even space elevators. These all rely on software to function. Behind the scenes of this world, beyond the hype of the next hottest release, there is a war going on. A European court found Microsoft guilty of abusing its Windows monopoly to exclude competitors in the software market. Software is so important to so many things and if you can control the software, it's like controlling the flow of oil. It's kind of weird because every single thing you kind of do as an educator, uh, involving mathematics at least, is opened except possibly the software. Apple plus Microsoft equals 100% of the desktop computer markets. For too long we've had all of these damn companies who have been saying, okay, well, if you want to make content, you've got to use this file format, you've got to do it in this way. When you get a program from, say, a proprietary software company like Microsoft, you're left effectively helpless. They don't give you the source code. When your mail client is hosted at Google, Google could decide that they're going to suspend your account, and then you disappear, and all of your information disappears. Your digital life could be destroyed in a minute, and it could be a mistake. The open source movement is changing the way businesses around the world are operating. If you improve it, those changes, if you're publishing them, also have to stay under the same license. So the body of free software just grows and grows and grows. Facebook uses open source software. Lots and lots of companies use open source software. NASDAQ, London Stock Exchange, Tokyo Stock Exchange, New York Stock Exchange, Google, Amazon. It's in planes, it's in the Airbus. All the film industry, it's in the power turbines. 87 percent of the U.S.'s power is generated on using Linux. The military has realized that Linux is a very good thing to use for a lot of their missions. We don't need something like WikiLeaks to come in and expose some you know, secret stuff that we have going on because we make everything in our development process public. It's all there, freely available for people to use, and it's free. It doesn't cost money. I want to be able to open up a device and see how it works and make it better. That's really what makes the engineers and scientists of tomorrow. The village has no electricity, no telephone, no television, and the children take laptops home that are connected broadband to the internet. It's about people having the ability to control their own destiny when it comes to technology, and that's what's that's what's challenged the industry as well. Their first attempt to do something about it was to call it an un-American cancerous virus that eats up software like a Pac-Man. So 10 years ago, Microsoft was the evil empire. These days, Apple has certainly taken that crown. We're handing over power, and we don't know what they're going to do with that power and we don't have any way to hold them accountable. Free software, it changed the way social movements communicate. The internet connection was cut off, but you kept seeing videos. They had ways of getting it out, even when the country tried to cut themselves off. If I'm not a programmer, I want my friends to be able to do it. I want the think tank to do it. I want the university to do it. I want the world to be able to look at this software and make sure that it's safe. You want software wars, I can tell you about software wars. I would have to say that my entire history at NASA was involved with software. There is nothing more valuable than being able to control information, just not just the flow of information, but information itself. In order to reach greatness, you have to be able to build on what has gone before you.